Hi friends! Today I'm talking about how to speak any language fluently. This is a book that my friend Alex Rawlings wrote, one of the best language learning books I've read. So I'd like to introduce you to it and if you want to purchase it, the links will be down below for Amazon and you can find it in most good bookstores, I guess it's all the way here in South Africa. So do go get yourself a copy. I learned so much from this book. So let me just read through some of the chapters, what he mentions. Chapter one is getting started. So good reasons why you should learn a language. How do you set goals and objectives? Where do you find resources? And what do you do if your motives change? Chapter two is all about time management. And he introduces a really good a method called the 15-30-15 routine. Um, Alex, I actually used this in my presentation I did at the Department of International Relations today, so credit to you for, for this method. So the 15-30-15 method is basically taking an hour of your day, dedicating it to language learning, and breaking it up into three pieces. So 15 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at lunchtime and another 15 minutes at dinner for review. So during the 30 minutes at lunchtime, you will do your intensive studying and the other 15 minute sessions you dedicate to practicing. He also talks about learning languages once or twice a week, how to form habits. And what I especially like is the less is more principle, <clears throat> which is something that I've mentioned in my videos before, not to cram, not like if you picture a calendar and every single day you do 15 minutes, just small bits of 15 minutes of language learning every day, compared to five hours on one day and nothing for two weeks and then 30 minutes, it is a lot better and you can see your progress a lot easier if you just do little bits consistently each day rather than cramming and not doing something for the rest. So in that aspect, less is more when it comes to language learning. Chapter four is the vo the vocab, the chapter I enjoyed the most. It is called learning vocabulary. It talks about why you learn vocabulary, understanding your learning type, and of course the power of context, which is also something I love to emphasize. You shouldn't be learning words on their own. Learn them in context. It is a lot easier to learn the sentence, where is the bathroom? than it is just to learn the word bathroom and where and then try and piece them together. Same goes for song lyrics. How easily do we remember song lyrics, right? You hear the melody, you hear the phrase. You don't just learn the single words and piece them together. Chapter five is about grammar, which I have to be honest, I kind of skimmed over this chapter. I read all the others very in depth. I skimmed over it because, I mean, as much as I love grammar, I did find this chapter to be rather intensive because it describes all of the grammar terms we use in English so that you can better understand your target language. So he goes in depth about uh, what are prepositions, what are personal and relative pronouns, uh, subject, object, verb, uh, auxiliary verbs, and so forth. So he does give excellent examples, but I did skip over this chapter, so I'm very sorry, Alex. <laughs> chapter six is about speaking, and he really focuses on how it's okay to make mistakes, what to do if you make a mistake, how to have a sense of humor about that. And also what was really interesting for me is what to do when people only speak English to you. So Alex gives some pointers about what do you do in those situations? Do you just give in? What are some practical tips you can apply to get over those situations? And then chapter eight is about reading. I really enjoyed the part where Alex talks about reading with your eyes closed. What that refers to, so think of the way somebody who's um, a native speaker of your target language, how they talk to you. You're not gonna be like, ah, da, 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 let me get a dictionary, you pull that thought, look up the word, okay, continue, right? No, 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 they're gonna talk, and whether you understand every word or not, depending on your level, you will infer what they mean by context, right? And um, so what reading with your eyes closed is, is reading a whole chapter or a passage of a book without looking up the word. And he gives two really good points. When should you look up words when you are reading? Number one is if the word appears so many times that you can realize it's an important word, but you don't know what it means, then you should look it up. And the second time you should look up a word is when Oh, when you cannot infer what it means by context, when you've read the whole sentence and you just cannot figure out what it is without reading that word. 
So this is essentially how we learn languages. People talk to us like babies don't have dictionaries. They just listen to their parents. If their parents point to something or say something, they will figure out the meaning in context. Chapter nine is all about technology. He speaks a lot about spaced repetition software like Memrise, uh, flashcard apps. He gives recommendations for language learning apps and talks about how you customize your social media feeds and also how you can use social media to your advantage, searching for hashtags in different languages, joining conversations online with native speakers. Something that I like to do personally is change my Twitter location so that the trending tweets are tweets that are trending in the location I've set it to. So nobody needs to know I don't really live in Paris, France, but I get to see what is trending in Paris. And then the very last chapter is keeping it going. So talking about top updates, which is when you refresh your language, when you just go back and study a bit more, and how to know when your language is getting rusty. An interesting thing Alex said was, if you overstate how good you are in a language, it means your language is getting rusty. Very interesting. So if I say, oh yeah, I'm super fluent in Hungarian, that's probably not true because my Hungarian is really rusty. <laughs> also, he ends off with how do you learn more languages and how do you maintain them all? Really good advice from an excellent polyglot. Um, if I just skim through, you can actually see how many notes I took in the book here and there um, because I, I like to read with a pen in my hand. I didn't expect that I would learn as much as I did. Um, and just the way the book is structured, there are these nice little captions like top tips or little facts that he puts in the gray areas. And just the layout of the book, you know, um, nicely designed. I mean, I'm a designer, obviously I will look at the layout, nice headings. He uses little stars here and there for points. Another very unique thing that Alex put in his book is questions and answers for you, like exercises that you can do. For example, here it says, write down all of the negative experiences you've had from working with a teacher in the past. Try to come up with ways to overcome these problems first time around. Then he gives model answers. So he pretends there's a person who's answered it. This person says, the teacher corrected me all the time. So how does this person overcome it? They ask the teacher to write down mistakes for them to correct it themselves. So very interesting activities and exercises you can do to really apply the things you learn in this book. Alrighty guys, uh, if you've read it, let me know what you thought and obviously let Alex know as well. He's also all up in the social medias. Okie dokie, see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you.